you know what uh, i committed the sin but that was my friend who made me commit it fair enough the friend might be involved but you admit you were wrong i was wrong that's it what i did was unacceptable i am to blame that's condition number one condition number two regret it i need to feel regret and remorse if a person comes to you and says listen i'm sorry for breaking the glass and they walk away and they're smiling and you're going to think to yourself this person's not really sorry are they sorry they're not really sorry they're just telling you ah it's okay i'm sorry it's with their mouths but when a person is remorseful when they are regretting you will find they've changed a little bit so if they've broken something sorry for giving you the example of breaking the glass but it's something very simple and it can happen and it happens to us so what would happen is the second time or should i say when a person says i'm sorry and they're really regretful they will do something about trying their best not to repeat it that brings us to the third condition the third condition is you ask Allah's forgiveness. The first one is you admit it. The second one is you regret it. Yes, I did this. I'm very sorry about it. And I seek your forgiveness, O Allah. That's the third condition. I'm asking you, please forgive me, O Allah. And the fourth one is to promise you're not going to do it again. Now that's a tough one, right? Because a lot of people say, you know what? What I did is wrong, I know. But I don't know whether I'm going to do it again or not. No! Don't say, I know or I don't know. For as long as when you asked Allah's forgiveness, you knew in your heart you were genuine and you will try your best never to do it again. That's acceptable in the eyes of Allah. Allah knows you're a human being. So say, for example, a person's committed adultery. And what happens is they then say, oh Allah, I admit what I did was wrong. I regret it. And I ask your forgiveness and I promise you I won't do it again. And they cry the warm tears. Subhanallah. And they fulfill their salah and they try to change their lives. You have to make sure that the person you committed the sin with, you, your relationship with them changes to a certain extent because you don't want to be caught in the same situation that facilitated the first sin. And thereafter, if for some reason, sometime later, separated from your seeking of forgiveness from that particular sin, you happen to fall, Allah says, go back and seek the same forgiveness again. What if it happens a third time? Go back, seek the forgiveness a third time, and a fourth, and a fifth, and infinity. Allah will forgive you. For as long as you asked Him for that forgiveness, that is called or oh, that is the meaning of the name, At-Tawwab. At-Tawwab. You know when we say Ta'ibun, Subhanallah, it refers to two things. Because the hadith says, Man taba, taballahu alayhi. Simple. Man taba, taballahu alayhi. Whoever seeks forgiveness, Allah will forgive them. It's over. That's what the hadith says. You seek forgiveness, Allah will forgive you. Surat Al-Furqan, Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ It's Surah Al-Zumar. Allah says, لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, explain to my worshippers, tell them, and this is why he's explained it so much, tell them, O oh my worshippers, those who have transgressed against Allah, and those who have oppressed themselves, الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Those who have gone beyond the limits themselves. They have wronged themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Do you want to hear what Allah says? He says, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. For indeed, Allah will forgive every single sin that you've committed because He is most forgiving most merciful. I am hopeful. I know I'm a criminal, meaning I know I've done wrong in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know I'm a human being. I know the sins I've committed, but guess what? I'm so hopeful because I have a Lord who's more merciful upon me than my own mother and father. I have hope and I will smile until the point of death. I will have hope. And I will continue having hope no matter what has happened in my life. No matter what type of sins I've committed in the past, it's okay. So for as long as you have sought the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trust me, you need to develop that hope. Allah will forgive you. 
Because why? Shaitan has a plan. What's his plan? He knows Allah instructed us not to lose hope. So he makes us lose hope. And that's exactly what a lot of people do. I receive a lot of messages, a lot of questions, a lot of emails, a lot of comments where people say, will Allah forgive me? The answer is always yes. If you are prepared to seek forgiveness, yes, 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 he will. And perhaps he has already, but you don't even know. Someone told me I've been seeking forgiveness every day 20 times for the one sin I committed a long time back. You know what I told him? MashaAllah, when you seek forgiveness, Allah will elevate your status now because that sin was probably wiped out with the first time that you asked the forgiveness. The first time you asked it, Allah's wiped it out. Now that you're asking again and again, Allah's elevating your status. Allah's elevating your status higher and higher. But in your heart, you need to know, you need to feel that you are forgiven. We are not so bad that Allah will not forgive us. No way. Don't let people tell you, you, there's no toba for you. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us. Allah says, I am a tawab. Ta'ibun means two things. It means the one who seeks the forgiveness. And it can mean the one who has forgiven. But Allah does not call himself ta'ib. The one who's forgiven once. He says, a tawab. In the Arabic language, when those who have studied emphasis would actually know it's called ta'kid. When you want to emphasize something, you say tawabun means the one who forgives those who sinned and repented, and then they sinned and repented, and then they sinned and repented, and then they sinned and repented, then they sinned and repented, right up to the end. That is a tawab. He is the one, a tawab. So one might ask, what's the difference between istighfar and tawbah? I'm sure we've heard that a lot of times. Say astaghfirullah. So we say, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Do you know what the difference is? Astaghfirullah actually means I seek the forgiveness of Allah. Oh Allah, I am seeking your forgiveness. And atubu ilayka or ilayhi means I am returning to him or to you, oh Allah. To return to Allah. So when you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means I've changed my life. That's what it means. Something has happened that has made me change. I've returned to Allah. So when you just say Astaghfirullah, yes, you are asking Allah's forgiveness. But when you have engaged in Tawbah, that means you have returned to the right path. When your little Tom Tom coming to Birmingham tells you that you need to make a U-turn, what do you do? You don't just keep on going straight thinking it's okay, it's okay. It will adjust itself, it's fine. Subhanallah, you try and make a U-turn as soon as possible, right? Because you know that, oh, I don't just say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If I say I'm sorry and I continue following what I think is right, although I'm being guided otherwise, do you know what will happen? I will end up in the wrong destination. But if I say I'm sorry, I'm going to make a U-turn right now, I will still get to the destination. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So my beloved brothers and sisters, when we say Allah is tawab, it is actually not us who say this. It is him. Subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, Inna Allah ta'ala yabsutu yadahu bil-layli liyatuba musi'u nahar wa yabsutu yadahu bil-nahari liyatuba musi'u layl hatta tatlu'a al-shamsu min maghribiha. What a powerful narration. Every day, Allah stretches the hand of mercy Allah stretches his hand to forgive those who have committed sin by night. And every night Allah stretches his hand to forgive those who have committed sin by day. Every day. Until when? Did Allah say we'll only do it for the first 20 minutes of, you know, this thing or that thing? No. For the first 20 minutes every Jumu'ah? No. Until the sun rises from the west. That means until the end of time. And there is another narration that says, In Allah Ta'ala Yaqbilu Tawbat al Abdi Malam Yugargir. Allah will accept the forgiveness of any worshipper for as long as they have not arrived at the point of Gargara, which means right at the point of death. When your soul is being removed from your body, that's the time 
when the doors of Tawbah are closed. Before that, totally open, wide open, completely. That is a tawab That is the mercy of Allah. My brothers and my sisters, never lose hope in that mercy of Allah. He loves you. And I promise you, when you have difficulty and hardship, you need to know that's the reason why we're on earth. Nobody on earth does not have difficulties or hardship, including the presidents and the wealthy and the leaders and those who have materialistically absolutely everything. They also have problems. They have issues. There will also come a day when they too will die. They will be on their deathbeds just like the others, more powerful and more wealthy and more good looking were on their deathbeds just before they died. You know, but we're going to a better place. Definitely. I have absolutely no doubt Allah does not allow you to suffer beyond a certain point but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you with something you may perceive as negativity it's actually supposed to draw you closer to him it's supposed to make you realize that this world is something temporary this world is something that is not supposed to be filled with all the roses perhaps I have more than I deserve it's the gift of Allah. But when I get into the hereafter, I will definitely see a lot. I will definitely then have the best of the best. Allah has promised that to me. So this is why when we say at tawab we need to smile. And we need to say, that's my Lord. That's my maker. Subhanallah. You know, if your son or your daughter or your relative or someone you know happens to be very, very famous or happens to be the best sportsman, certain field. MashaAllah, we have Mu'in Ali with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him goodness and ease. But at the same time, okay, let's use his example. When he clocked the century of a little while back, right? What did we say? My boy that, right? That's our boy, man. Do you get my point? That's our guy, man. Make dua for him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us champions of the deen. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, you're always an ambassador of the deen. Every one of us. Even if you're walking in the streets of Birmingham, you're an ambassador of the deen. Carry yourself well. That alone is da'wah. Carrying yourself well is already the beginning of da'wah. Even without uttering one word. So we say, we get happy. We say, hey, that's my guy. That's our dude, man. Wallahi, I want to teach you something. The example of Allah is far higher than anything we would be able to sight but whenever we hear the names of allah we should say that's my rab that's my allah that's my maker that's the most merciful he's the one i love him you dedicate total absolute unconditional love not to your boyfriend or girlfriend no to allah and then you know what will happen that's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dedicate your love to him Salatul Fajr comes, that's a tawab. Do you know what I'm going to do? Set my clock half an hour ahead of time and I'm going to get up and say, I love you, Allah. This is just for you, Allahu Akbar. And I get up and I make my wudu and I know how difficult it is. Subhanallah. You know how fortunate you guys are? You can set your clock for 7.30 and you can still catch Salatul Fajr. We can never do that in Africa. Impossible. One of the perks. One of the perks. You can be fasting every Monday and Thursday and every 13th, 14th, 15th of the lunar month. And you know what it will be? Early breakfast and a late lunch. That's all it is. And you'd have fasted. Wow. And it's not wrong to shift to Africa when Ramadan comes because then we have the bonus. At least at this time, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah grant you ease. You see the deen, Islam is a beautiful religion. Allah is the best, the best ever. The deity that is obviously the highest. Nothing compares with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are fortunate we have him as our Rabb, as our maker. Because I promise you if he wanted to punish us, he could have done it a long time back. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah will never punish them while they are seeking forgiveness. This is why when something happens to you, the first thing you say, obviously we say, 
inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, depending on what exactly has happened. But we also say, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi. May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good returning to him. Because when you are seeking forgiveness, Allah won't punish you in that condition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish you in that condition. I have spoken for my minutes. I told the brother I would complete at a quarter to. So alhamdulillah, I hope and I pray that a few words I've said have motivated myself and yourselves. We get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We repent to Allah no matter what has happened and we never allow shaitan to make us feel that Allah is not going to forgive me. No, not me. No matter what. No matter what you've done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. Do you know that shirk is a sin that Allah does not forgive? But a lot of us don't understand what that means. There's no contradiction in what I'm saying because when Allah says I don't forgive shirk, he's talking about those who die without repenting. If someone dies without repenting, the mercy of Allah is, he says, I can forgive all the sins, but shirk is one thing I'm just telling you now, I'm not going to forgive that. So say, for example, I've committed so many sins and I died. May Allah not let that happen to me. But if I died without asking Allah's forgiveness, he will forgive me. He's looking for any excuse to forgive all my sins besides one. So when we say Allah will not forgive shirk, we're talking about those who've died in that condition without repenting. Then Allah warns you with a stronger warning. Because if you look at the Sahaba, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the majority of them, they were actually mushrikeen prior to accepting Islam. They were polytheists. They worshipped idols and stones and so on. What happened? Inna al-Islam yajubbu ma qabla. The minute they entered the fold of Islam, everything deleted. The same applies to tawbah. When you repent to Allah and you turn to Him, it deletes everything bad that you've done in the past. When you go for Hajj, you come back as clean as the day you were born, the day your mother gave birth to you. Have you ever heard an explanation of that? I can tell you one sentence. Allah deletes. So people say you come with a clean slate. I say no. No hadith says you come with a clean slate. The sins are wiped out, but your good deeds, they are carried through. Subhanallah. They are carried through. It is selective deleting. You know, when you delete the hard, hard drive or you want to format the hard drive or your phone, you want to actually reset the factory settings. What happens? You need to back things up first if you want them. And if you've just done that, everything's gone, the good and the bad. But when it comes to tawbah, Allah says, the bad is deleted, the good, we keep it, it remains. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد